Um, I'm Erin Forsyth, I'm from the Depot Art Space and um, I'm the Publications Manager there. This is our third issue of The Vernacularist, the environmental issue that we're here to launch today. Um, see lots of people here that are involved um, in one way or another um, in contributing to the different publications that we've produced so far. Um, just really quickly, um, also on this handout we've got uh, the Vernacularist Manifesto, which was written by Nanda Blinko, uh, which explains what it is, um, sort of the modus operandi behind these publications as being an alternative platform for discussion of things of cultural and social significance, um, particularly in um, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, I'm getting a bit nervous now, so I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Um, without further ado, please let me welcome Dominic Coey, aka Tourette's, to give us a poetry reading. Thanks, Dominic. Hello, how's it going? Um, it's quite a strange little setup. I'm not usually awake at this time. I'm not usually sober at poetry reading, so it's all, it's all new. <laughs> I normally have them memorised, but um, I fell in love with my boss recently, and, so, and she's in Melbourne, so I spent the whole time Skyping her. I didn't practice for this, so I apologise. I'm going to be reading you know. Uh, and also, um, there's going to be heaps of swearing um, and talking about sex and drugs, so if you don't like that kind of thing, or your children don't like it, you can sort that out amongst yourselves. This one's uh, uh, wrote a letter to Santa this year. Dear Santa, I've been pretty good this year, comparatively, so I've written you a short list of gift ideas. Firstly, I'd like an unpaid intern to follow my dreams for me, implement all of my here-brain schemes and find endings to my half-finished poems. I also want a job, one that combines my love of minimalist fiction and eating pussy. Where I'll be held back by laziness and a socialist upbringing, I'm tired of standing in kitchens weighing up suicide options. In case you're wondering, I'm leaning towards drug overdose. Speaking of drugs, I'd like a Christmas stocking stuffed with Oxycontin, Valium, Tramadol and Heroin. Heaps of money would be nice too, but keep that between us. Poets aren't supposed to care about that kind of thing. Can you find out whose dick I have to suck to get Creative New Zealand funding? And get the intern to suck it for me. <laughs> oh please, Santa, won't you help Paul Wes Anderson return to form, make the Simpsons funny again, and cure all that ails me? There's the dyslexia of dermatitis, ankle losing spondylitis, tennis, and actually, you know what I'd really love for Christmas? A tiny little pig. I'd call him Sebastian, and then we had a jaunty little hat, and I'd teach him to do tricks like use the internet. Auckland is pretty unbearable around Christmas, as opposed to the hub of culture and refinement that is the rest of the year. It's a joke. So you can get tickets for me, Sebastian, and the intern to go somewhere exciting. A Hesha Nobles bar me this time of year. Lastly, I want ethical yet perverse pornography, vegan cheese that isn't the texture rubber, and some kind of left wing revolution. I hope this letter finds you in good spirits. Season's greetings, Tourette's. <laughs> this is my book that I, I did, but I don't have any for sale because I'm sure it's capitalism, so. <laughs> Hence why I wrote poetry. Anyway, I've got a whole lot of little short poems here that I'm going to do. This first one's called uh, Five Things That Aren't As Cool As I've Been Led To Believe. Anal Sex, Cocaine, Being A Rapper, Shakespeare, New York. This one's called How Do You Spell Stupid? Remember school, everyone normal but you. Teachers and bullies sharing cigarettes in class, screaming child of cheap love. Words are too good for you with your ripped shoes and filthy mind. But you charmed words, won their affection, fucked the shit out of them on pages and walls. Normal is shit, sex, and bad art. This one says, borderline personality disorder. It's my friend Owen. I took a test on the internet, it said I was crazy. I got fucking wasted for two days. <laughs> this one's called 10 Easy Steps to Happiness. Drink to feel alive. Two, get high to feel nothing. Three, put secrets on Facebook. Four, have unprotected sex with people you hate. Five, idealize dead drunks. Six, walk out screaming. Seven, throw away everything you own. Eight, porn and documentaries at 5 a.m. Nine, forget your medicine. Ten, travel alone. This one's called, I should probably stop telling people to follow their dreams. Two days to my benefit, sneaking on the train, been living in my mother's basement since New York, looking for writing work, but people don't take me seriously. Maybe it's the tattoos of my personality. I guess both are permanent. Smoking my mother's weed and downloading films from the festival catalog, do you want to buy my book? But of course you can't, because as I explained before, I don't have any. <laughs> this one's called, an ice cream truck drives down the street at night. Someone stole the neighbor's dog and left it at the school. I don't think it was me. And this is the last one of the short poems. <laughs> called, How Do You Spell Stupid 2? 
When I went to uni, I had to do a test to prove I wasn't pretending to be dyslexic. Every time I made a mistake, the woman yelled at me, I was 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and this last one, sorry. too kind. And this last one's called Community 2. It was in the uh, vernacularist, which is probably the reason why I'm um, reading these poems at the library, um, which you can purchase over there. Anyway, it goes like this. Sacrifice the eye, remove the heart with bread knife, hacksaw, bare hands, etc. Be part of something bigger than the self you have created. The previous was a slogan for governmental department that dealt with existential crises. Funding was cut and channeled into building motorways through wildlife sanctuaries. Remember, there is no eye in cult, but there is one in loneliness. Footnote. For further reading, see Lewis the Knight's autobiography, If You Like the Plague, You'll Love the Crusades. To speak figuratively, a community is born of union, oh sorry, a community is like a child, born of union, it requires food, shelter and television. At a certain age it will develop a mind of its own. At this point the child will compromise the ideals of the parents to sell phone credit or sugar water. As Dr. Crippen used to say, children are all psychopaths. The challenge of any crew, sorry mob, sorry gang, sorry community, is maintaining the illusion of the whole for as long as possible. There is no shame in collective fantasies. To this end follow these three simple rules. Do not read between party lines. Become adept at turning blind eyes to glaring truths. Stock up on opiates and rat poison. Fundamentally, all great movements begin with eyes but soon lose them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.